What's up, everybody? Back again with another video. Yeah, I've been going for, I guess, making content for like a minute now. I want to say a minute, minute, but I guess like a, almost like a week. I hadn't really posted or updated, uploaded anything outside of streaming here and there. And that's just because of just not feeling in the mood to do so and feeling kind of defeated because like you made the content, you put it out there and you're really not getting no views on it. Not even getting feedback to even find out, okay, maybe it's the quality of what I'm doing or it's the content I'm making that people aren't really interested in. So anyway, I say all to say that, yeah, I have been feeling a little defeated when it comes to that kind of stuff. And then I had personal matters going on too. Still do, but it's like now I'm, I'm like, I still need to make the content because I enjoy making the content. I enjoy talking about things I talk about. And, you know, whether, whether anybody <laughs> receives it or not, I guess at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, what do you like doing? And I like making the content, you know, so those that do tune in, the one or two people that do watch the videos or whoever watch the videos, I do appreciate y'all tuning into the videos. Even if you don't watch the whole thing, you only watch a couple minutes of it, I do appreciate y'all for tuning into it. But uh, yeah, in this, um, so in this one particular video, this in this one today, it's something that just came out recently between David Pacman. I don't know if y'all know him. He's like a progressive news reporter on YouTube. He's pretty big. He's almost like, I think he, he's done interviews with Young Turks before. But he has his own show, David Pagman Show. And Tim, generally, I do watch him on some of his stuff. I mean, some of his stuff really is clickbait. Because, I mean, he will get you with the clickbait titles. And I get it. You know, we all trying to make that content. He has more people following him. But we all trying to make that content to get people to tune into our stuff. And then actually listen to it and watch it. But this one particular video, this one instance, he had a, a black Republican on. I forget the guy's name. And he was talking to him. And I think he was being a little disingenuous <laughs> with the, the point the guy was making. Now, I don't even agree with the, Repu the, the black Republican. I mean, I said I have a whole bunch of issues. Y'all know I'm into politics when it comes to the Republican Party. I have a, I, hell, I have an issue with the Democratic Party. And so when you're telling me that you support the Republican Party, where they literally do nothing for, for black people at all, period. Like, they, they do nothing. And you can argue with me all day long, every day. And like I tell anybody, if you want to argue with me about something, give me a policy that they've done. Don't give me what you think they've done. Like, when I talk to people 45, oh, well, he's, you know, he's done this for the black community. I'm like, give me a policy that he's done to improve live, the black people's lives. Because I'm like, it's been done for everybody else. But that's a whole different topic on a different day. I'm just I'm just making that point to say that I don't stand with Republicans and I don't stand with Democrats because Democrats patronizes and they come in and try to, you know, make all these promises to the black community to get our vote. And then once they're in office, they don't even fulfill any of the promises they made to us in our community. We still waiting for the Voting Rights Act. So um, but I say that to say, though, in this video, some of the stuff the guy was saying actually was true. And David Pacman was being a little disingenuous, not believing him, talking about, well, I don't see that. And I'm just like, so yeah, let's just look at it together. And then, you know, we all decide on, you all say below, you know, those that tune in, how you feel about it. Because I, I think what he, some of the argument he's making is valid and it's true. And for him to, for David Pacman to be sitting here saying that he doesn't believe that, and I was like, well, you clearly are, you aren't online or you don't get on involved in any social media, or you lying to yourself and you lying to your audience. Because I clearly think that he's got to be lying to his audience because everybody knows. And some of the argument he's making is, I guess let me preface it that way, is that a part of this whole Me Too movement, which I am for the Me Too movement, but part of the Me Too movement was that um, women can say anything and people are going to believe them. And I wholeheartedly do believe that. Now, whether any action comes from that, in certain people, circumstances, depending on who you you know, how, how, what, what shade you are, I think that it will hold true. But in most cases, sometimes it does not. I mean, I've seen plenty of great cases to where uh, people have got off on stuff. It, but most of the time, especially when it involves like people in my community, uh, if they say anything, yeah, it, it holds to be true. And then the fact that he was talking about something that Anna Navarro said on The View about, you know, they really don't, we don't, men are useless and stuff. And David Pagan, well, maybe she was just joking. I was like, come on, man. I was like, come on now. I'm like, no, no, she, she was not joking. She was dead ass serious. So it's like, no, you 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 got you to gotta pull away from that. But anyway, let's just watch it. And then you all give your opinion below. And then I'm going to show some receipts because he done, he asking for receipts. I'm going to show some receipts to back up his claim. Now, I can't back up all of it because I don't agree with all of it. But for the most part, I do stand with some of the stuff that he was saying because it is it is true. I mean, it is true. I, I've seen many cases of it. it. It really is true. So let's tune in. Let's just watch it. And then you all can determine, you know, how you feel about it.
Today, we welcome to the program Royce White. Royce is a Republican running for the U.S. Uh, Senate seat. Uh, actually, Amy Klobuchar's seat, interestingly enough. Royce has been endorsed by Steve Bannon and Alex Jones in the Minnesota Republican Party, uh, also hosts the Please Call Me Crazy podcast available on YouTube. Royce, if I understand correctly, in 2020, you wrote in Tulsi Gabbard, and, but you're behind Trump currently. Is that right? That is correct. So listen, you came to my attention uh, in a clip I, I talked about the other day where you. So let's appreciate the man's backdrop. I ain't even gonna stun on it. I like his clean, crispy black backdrop. <laughs> I mean, I'm I, you can y'all can see what's going on behind me, but uh, and I do flip it sometimes somewhere where you can see what's my computer screen stuff behind me. But anyway, I, I appreciate the backdrop. Said what one of the issues you find right now is that women have become quote too mouthy. T tell me about that. How did you come to believe that? <laughs> well, first of all, I was being humorous. Uh, and, oh, you were. Uh, yeah, no, I was being pretty humorous. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a sick puppy. I got, I got a sort of, uh, you know, unique humor. But hmm. I, I will say that, you know, it is, it is my opinion. But, yeah. but I think even more so, a fact that the left has um, weaponized identity politics in in our current political culture, and hmm. that the identities of of women, uh, the LGBTQ. Blacks and Jews are all sort of used in a similar fashion to to manufacture consent that being an American citizen isn't so much that important anymore. Uh, and so give me an what example I meant, of that. Give me an example of that. Well, so let's just pick one of those, for example. Well, let's take well, all let's take all th all four because they're all four fruit from the same poisonous tree. Well, but just so that it's clear to the audience, yeah. let's just pick one as an example to show kind okay. of your line of reasoning. How has female identity been weaponized yes. in order to show that being an American citizen isn't important? Well, number one, the, the feminist movement and the women's rights movement have been clumped into a more global citizen based ideology that that we are all one global citizenship. And, and the women's rights movement is at the helm of that much by their own powerful organization, grassroots, not only here in the country, but all around the, the world. If that um, were the case, though, Royce, and I'm just trying to understand this, I want this to be a conversation. But, but if, wait a second, wait a second. But and this is the issue I have, but and this is the issue I always have when it comes to people and, and, and stuff. It's like, let me get my thought out first before you start interrupting me. Now, I, I will say, I, I will back him, I stand behind him on that because it's like, if I'm talking, let me finish my thought. Let me get everything out before you cut me off. And then you can take notes. Like, even if you don't want to, if you, you, you call yourself, you may not remember what I just said, take notes on it then. You got a whole computer in front of you. Take notes. And that way you can come up later because the only thing you're doing is when you're trying to interrupt somebody, you're trying to get them lost in their thought and the lost in their train of thought to where they can't make the point they initially was trying to make. And I hate when people try, I hate when people do that. What I was, what I'm saying is, and let me, let me be even more specific. Yeah. The, the, the prevailing consensus around the women's rights movement and the feminist movement are ideas such as believe all women that was popular with the me too movement. And then you have a, you know, a, a, an even more pervasive idea that in general, uh, and it's, it's said casually, but it's said with a lot of emphasis and, and potency, let's say that men are not useful and that, that women are the women in their existence in this country politically right now today, but sort of all around the world are nothing more than a byproduct of a tyrannical patriarchy. And by that definition or by that thinking uh, that that men are more so a hindrance on society and who useless. says that and, give me a, who says men aren't useful oh, give me a name well i mean one is anna navarro self-described republican centrist anna navarro sat anna right navarro up there. says w that men aren't useful anna navarro sat right up there on the view with joy behard and whoopi goldberg and the rest of them and she made a joke about men not being useful except for gay men because they're very good at gossip and and accessorizing but you, right we started this television. interview with you saying, oh, what you said about women being mouthy is a joke. You're conceding what Anna Navarro said is a joke. And so you're wanting. It was not a joke, though. That, that's that's the thing that's that's the thing that's really getting me. What she said was it was not a joke when she said that she was being dead serious. And like half the people on The View was being serious. And even the quote that uh, jo I forget her name, the uh, host, she said it herself, like a lot of women said the same thing that, you know, they don't see the value in men, which is, is weird to me because I'm like. I mean, I guess we got science now, but anyways, you can't procreate without having a man. I mean, unless you get in vitro, but you still got to have a man to create sperm cell. Anyway, you got to have a man present to be able to do that. And I don't want to diminish us down to that's just our only use. But I'm just saying to say that men are useless. 
it, anyway, what he says is to be true. Now, she did say that. And you can call it a joke or not. What we what do we always tell about people with, with large platforms is that you have to be mindful about your audience and who people who are listening to your audience. Same thing we said about 45. People are impressionable. I don't care how old they are, people are impressionable. So when you have a large audience like that and you're making slick comments like that, people are gonna take it serious. I mean, they're gonna so they're gonna say the same thing and continue spreading the same thing to where where they don't see any value in men. And and believe me, I understand. You know, the threat when it comes to women and men, I, I, have, I grew up around nothing but women. I grew up, I'm, so I'm very protective of women, especially our sisters, I'm very protective of that. But to go to his point, what he's saying, she did say that. Like, she legitimately said that. Matter of fact, here's a clip. So there's this clip going viral online of a dozen women being asked the following question. Do we need men? <laughs> Most answered very quickly, no. <laughs> and only one said she thought women needed a man in their lives, only one. But when men were asked a similar question, do we need women, most of them said yes. <laughs> so why do you think that is? Because men are useless. <laughs> I mean, love it. And by the way, I want I to differentiate between straight men and gay men, because I think I, I would die without gay men. Nobody can gossip <laughs> like gay men. Nobody can help you accessorize like gay men. Nobody can help you uh, from, keep you from doing harm to, your, to yourself uh, like, like gay men. Now, you can take what you want to take with that. She said it herself. You don't have to believe it. You, you saw it from the horse's mouth, what she just said. Anyway, back to the story at hand. Example. Well, no, women. I don't hold think on it's a, a joke. Let me get the question. Out, I don't know. I don't think hold it's a, a joke. Second, hold on. Hold on. You no, just wait said a second. Joke. Let's, let's be clear. No, no, I didn't. I said what I said was said in humor, but it had a lot of validity to it. I don't think what Anna Navarro said was a joke, even though it was said in a joking setting. How I do you know it wasn't what, a joke then? No, I said, I don't think it's a joke. Okay. Just like people would say they don't think what I said is a joke. See, now, again, why he, what the point he's just making so he took the way he said was being serious, even though he was joking behind it. But then David's going to come around and say, well, how do you know what she said wasn't joke? Well, why didn't you give him that same luxury to say that, well, if how do I, I'm, why would I even invite this man to on of my show? And I get it. It's for content. It's all for content, which is why I said early on, he does have some clickbait stuff where he put this, the, you know, the titles out there for you to click on his stuff. And some of the titles are not lining up with the topics that he's discussing or he don't go into any detail behind it. But I still watch his content. I still like him. But anyway, it's like, how are you going to say that you invited him on for something he says and you didn't consider what he said to be a joke? And he, David didn't say that, but necessarily what he's getting to say, what he's getting to, to believe is it's not a joke. But then he's going to say, well, how do you know that what Anna said wasn't a joke? It's like, come on now, dude. You, now you're playing, you, you're playing word games and you, you're trying to just do a play on stuff and you, you, you know exactly what you're doing. I have the right to think that. My point is, is that there is a growing ideology that you can see by looking at social media, which is a, is a good temperature gauge of what people think, obviously, because you're bringing up something I said that was posted on social media. Well, um, I don't want to get bogged down in this necessarily, but it sounds, Royce, no, it's like not, you're no, one it's not example. bogged down. It's, it's, it's important like detail. It sounds like you're one detail of the prevailing view of the feminist movement being men aren't useful is something Anna Navarro said jokingly. Is no, right? no, 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 no. Anna Navarro, just like you're trying to represent my views, or let's not say you, let's say the mainstream media has tried to represent my view about women in general based on one soundbite from one podcast as a general sort of uh, Yeah, but forget of, about that, Royce. Uh, I'm no, just no, let's not, you, no, 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 let's not forget about it. No, 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 let's not forget about it. If you're gonna keep interrupting me, then, then I'm gonna keep- It's interesting. How do you say forget about that? How do I forget about that? You brought it up. You brought it up and you want to talk about it. So now you say, well, forget about that. No, we don't want to forget about that. You don't want to see your point. And this is why I have a problem with certain people sometimes. And it's like, you know, let, again, let people get their thoughts out. Let people prove their points. Let people state their facts and their stuff. Stop interrupting people. Stop interrupting people. And he does it sometimes too, but he does it admittedly knowing that, well, if you're going to interrupt me, I'm going to interrupt you. And I play that same card too, because I'm like, if you're not going to let me finish saying what I got to say, when you start talking, I'm going to immediately start talking. Because I just think this, I mean, I get it in my, my corporate environment. When people are talking, it pisses me off. People are talking and somebody starts talking over the top of them. It's like, let them finish saying what they have to say. And then you can have a rebuttal or you can ask questions. But you will never get the full context of it until the person gets it all out. And then what will happen is you'll ask a question and interrupting them and say, well, if you had let me finish, 
you would know what I was getting ready to say. But you won't let me finish because you keep cutting me off. So this is the issue I have when it comes to this. But anyway, let's let's get back to it. Interrupting you. What I'm this saying is, is nowhere, that the, the mainstream media. No, you're saying it's not going anywhere. I'm explaining it perfectly fine. The mainstream media is trying to depict or or, or paint a picture of a rising, uh, let's say, misogynist America First movement based on my one soundbite. But then you turn around and say, well, you can't talk about all feminist ideology based on Anna Navarro. What are we talking about? I'm not. No, first so of all, I'm not see doing if we that. Can reframe. No, let's see if okay. we can reframe, Royce, and okay. then we'll move on. Okay. You, I, you're, you've sort of been leading this. Okay. You identified a number of groups. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let, let me just get the question out. And then if you disagree okay. with the question, then the audience can judge for themselves. And that, that's, that, that's the other thing that pissed me off too. He said, let me get the question out. You're cutting this man off and you won't let him finish his point, but you're going to say, let me get the question out. Okay. You indicated a number of groups. You named women and yes. you named Jews and you named others. Uh, Blacks that are and the LGBTQ. So that being an American citizen is no longer super important. We focused Blacks, in. Hold Blacks, on a second, Royce. Women, I be the able LGBTQ, to get the and can. Jews. I want to oh, be clear. Hold on a sec. You, Don't you say in other groups. groups. Don't say and other groups. The four groups were Blacks, the LGBTQ, women, and Jews. Yes. We focused yes. in on women. Yes. And I asked you for examples. And yes. the one example that you have provided to justify the claim you made is something yes. Anna Navarro said on The View. No, just an Correct. example. Well, give me another example. Who are the people saying? And this is why I got pissed off. I don't agree with this guy. I'm not saying I agree with the, the black guy, his viewpoints. But what he's saying to, to a degree is true, that there's a, a movement going on. And I mean, it's not just a movement. I mean, it's been going on for a minute. and men like are, are kind of useless. And I'm and I, because I mean I had a, well I wanted to have an argument but I I just cut it off, and I get some men are terrible like I I, I got a well I have on the social somebody you know people you talk to on social media, and she made a post, and was saying like you know if you're gonna do X Y and Z in my comments you're gonna say some nasty stuff in my comments or you're gonna say some perverted stuff in my comments, I'm gonna block you. So I'm like you know what's going on? I was like I really haven't been seeing nothing going on in your comments. I'm like what's what's really going on? And she was like so she says men are just nasty, and I'm like. I'm a man. I'm talking to you and I'm asking you what the hell is going on. Like, why? Wh what do you mean? And she, she was like, man, it's just nasty. But if you aren't the one saying the stuff in my comment section, then you don't have anything to worry about. But you just made a blanket statement to say that men are nasty. And granted, I know men do it sometimes too, but I hate it from both sides. It's like, just say some of the people you deal with or some of the men in your comment section are just terrible people and they need to get blocked. But to paint this overlying picture to say that all men are terrible, yeah, that's been, that's been going on for a minute. And then when you drill down, because I got friends that do it, and it pisses me off, and I cut them off. And I'm like, wait a minute. How are you going to say all men are terrible when you got one standing right here in front of you, and I've never treated you like that? Well, some of y'all are just different. Well, then don't just say all men are terrible. Say some of the people that you deal with or some of the people that you date are terrible or the people that you have, some of the people you have interaction with. But to make this blanket picture of all men are terrible, because I'm like, if, if both sides really started doing it hardcore, yo, we ain't going to never get nowhere. Like, if, if, I mean, we ain't going to never get nowhere. And what he says does stand to be true to where that if you can, any woman, if any man, a woman accuses a man of anything like his, she's presumed correct until the truth comes out. And nine times out of 10, she could, she could be correct, but there are some outliers to where she's lying. And there are many examples of that. And I mean, but anyway, let's just get back to the interview and I'm going to cut it off short because I'm not going to play the whole thing from y'all can go back and watch. I mean, you see it, you can watch it on David Pakman, go to his channel and check it out. But I got beef with it, but let's let's get back to the video. That men are not useful. Oh well, it's it's they're not. Well, that just happened to be what Anna Navarro said specifically. But, but the, you the, said I, that the that's ideology. Who says the, it? the ideology is that men represent the remnant of a tyrannical patriarchy, and by oh default, the usefulness of men is in question at a societal wide basis. Okay. I don't want to use all our time on this, but it sounds like we're not going to get any more examples and the audience can kind of judge that for themselves. Hey, you can pick any, you can pick anybody you want. The whole Me Too movement was based on the claim that we should believe all women. Do you think we should believe all women? Well, that, that we've already talked about. It's a completely different question. He won't answer the question. Just answer the question. And it has to do with no, what it's is not. the responsibility? No, 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 it's just, of just answer the question. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. It has nothing, whatever. Wait a second. Whatever, it's not a different. 
And he won't answer it because he's afraid he's going to lose viewers. Just answer the question. For the question. And this is the, he's playing the political route. This is a problem I have, and I don't keep pausing it, but this is a problem I have when it comes to political people. When somebody asks you a question, just answer the goddamn question. Just answer the question. It's not American a different citizen. question at all. It, it certainly does because there are fundamental rights of being an American citizen, one of which has always been the presumption of innocence, oh, number boy. one. So there is there is complete merit to bring... And then the condescending nature, talking about, oh boy, he... He's right. It's, it, you are innocent until proven guilty. I mean, that's that's what he's supposed to be. Of course, a lot of us don't experience that, but that's what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. And he's saying, oh boy, so I'm like, he asked you a straight up question and this man would not answer the question. And I know why he's not answering the question because if he said anything to counter what his audience might believe, then he's afraid he's going to lose viewers. Because I mean, he does. I, I know without a shadow of a doubt, he knows and he believes that, that typically... Nine times out of ten, if a woman says that a man did something to her, there are the women, not just not. I mean, men going. I mean, some men are dicks, so they are they are going to question it. But the majority of women are going to say that they are in agreement with her and that we should trust our beliefs. And she could be wrong. She could be wrong. And there is never an apology to her when it comes out that she's wrong. I mean, I've seen many of cases where that has happened. The the one football, player, I think it was out of Texas or someplace. Where the young the guy didn't want to be with her anymore. He was going off to college, and he had a full fledged scholarship. He was, he, was, he had a full a fast track to get to the NFL, and he was going to play for this this A one school. I, I would do. I don't know what it is. I don't watch football like that. But it was a well known school, and um, she said that he raped her. She said he raped her. They did. They didn't do a rape test. They didn't do a rape kit. They didn't do any of those things. They locked this man up. They literally locked this man up. This man is in tears telling him, telling the judge and everybody that it didn't happen. They locked this man up. I think it was for two or three years before it came out that she had been lying. And she said she had been lying. She, of course, she got arrested in the end, but his career is ruined. Like, he missed, on, he missed out on college. Like, he had to go back and go back and go through practice session again. And I, I, don't, I think he did, eventually did make it into the NFL. But... It messed up his track and his going him going to go to school because she lied on him and people believed it. Like they did did nothing to back it up. And it's, I mean, there are plenty of other examples like that. And I'm not trying to sit here and say that you shouldn't believe women because I mean there are there, I mean, I'm one of those people too that I don't want to be in the woods with a I, mean, I don't want to be in the woods with a man or a woman. I really deal with, I'd rather deal with a bear. I honestly would rather deal with a bear. But that's the thing that the guy is some of the, the points he's trying to make. Again, I'm not agreeing with everything that he says. But what he is, some of the stuff he is trying to make a point on, and David Packman don't even want to uh, agree with him on, and he don't have to agree with him. I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but he is saying some facts. And to sit here and say that he's not, it's very, it's very disingenuous. Get into question when we talk about American citizenship. Royce, like, you uh, understand again, that when police again, investigate crimes, they investigate crimes, but that doesn't take away the presumption of innocence in a court of law. Like, this is basic legal stuff. That is a lie. That is a lie. Ask that to black people. I mean, you're talking to a black man. Ask that to black people. Generally speaking, we are in, we are guilty until proven innocent when it comes to black people. 100%. I mean, here we just created a law a law now here in Georgia for for um the Hispanic community that they can stop and ask you and, and question you wherever you at to see if you're an, a legal citizen or not. And if not, you know, report you to ICE and have you sent back across the border. Like, they literally can stop anybody if they have a question of your citizenship. You could be a full-fledged American born right here in the States. But if they think that you, if they, because of the color of your skin, yes, obviously the color of your skin, or you speak in a foreign language, they can stop you and ask you for your identification, your social security cards, to see if you're a full-fledged citizen. So I'm like, come on now. There's, I'm like, that, that, that part right there was really pissing me off. I was like, come on now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what it's supposed to be, but that doesn't apply towards all Americans. Roy, no, no, no. Is, it takes away the presumption your, of innocence in the court policy, of public opinion. But this is crazy. It takes away the presumption of innocence in the court of public opinion, which now in today's world can be just as dangerous as the, the opinion in the court of law. And, yeah, and even for, false again, rape claims again, are 0.02% of according all sexual to you, assault claims. According to you. According to you, according to crime reporting from police departments all over the country, according to according to you to and the police according departments, to, according to you, then why don't they bring more claims? Who? Why don't more make it to the courtroom? What claims? Because they lack evidence. 
Um, I, uh, and that's my thing too. So you want to quote, quote st- crime statistics? I mean, you've had ca- in the black again. I'm gonna go back to the black community. You have tons of examples of where white people have committed crimes against the black community, and they didn't keep record of it because they didn't want to keep record of it because they didn't care about what they were doing. So to sit here and quote the statistics and say that you know false claims are zero point zero zero two. Well, I think it's a two percent or whatever it was. It's like come on now. It's and then let's say you are part of that zero point zero two percent. So should your should your thing be back? So it should it not count towards the argument or the discussion? It's like I hate stuff like that. But anyway. the the reason the the reason why police departments say first of all, again, you're trying to sidetrack me. and You keep interrupting no, no, no. me. You brought so, me on your you show, created and he does keep interrupting him. This sidetrack. You brought you me on your show. Sidetrack. You brought me on your show. And we're not you asked talking me about, about a question what I about women. About. I'm answering but a question Royce, about feminists in the Royce, feminist hold on, movement. Hold on, Royce. Royce. You the point is, is when you, when women. you, when you, when you assume that all women are telling the truth or that we should believe all women on face value by default, I don't know anyone who is by that. the whole movement of the, the whole me. And he said, he don't know anybody that says it. Come on now, man. Come on. Man. You can see, go on any post with any woman that says anything about a man and 100% there will be a community of people in that poll saying that you got to stand behind her and they believe her when she could, she could wholeheartedly be the lady that accused her boyfriend <laughs> of giving her HIV. People were tearing this man up in the comments. They found this man where he worked at. I think they got this man fired for, I mean, they went after this dude and she came out and she had been lying. She, of course she got arrested too, but she had been, she was lying. But they tore this man down. And I'm like, bump a court of law. The public opinion will come after you. Because once they actually catch wind of that, they're going to find out where you work. They're going to find out who your family members are. Yo, th- th- these people should be some detectives. I mean, because they, they be putting in all kind of work to, to get all kind of information on you. And they will beat you down without having all the facts. And then when the facts come out, they don't come back up and clean themselves up. They don't come back and apologize. They don't want to put back any effort to clean up what they just destroyed. They don't want to do that. They'd rather just blow it up and, and, and let you deal with the fallout. Even if it's a false claim, they'd rather just let you deal with the fallout. And this lady was lying. So to sit here and say that he don't know who's saying it, it's like, man, shut the hell up. Like, you really can't. I, no, nah, you need to shut the hell up on that. Because you can go on any post, any post. I mean, because you don't have to rely on the fact of, of the court opinions. I'm telling you, before you make it to the court system, Go look on any post about what anybody saying accusing a man of doing anything and look in that comment section and you will wholeheartedly see that these people are tearing down men. And again, I'm not saying I stand with this dude and what he believes. I'm just saying some of the points he was making are are to be true. And I'm not sitting here going on this thing about, you know, woe is to men and whatnot. I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I just don't like stuff when it comes to things like this. I just, I, I just don't. I don't like when you come into arguments like this or this nature. Because I'm like, if, if this guy, I'm like, if you don't believe him, like, first of all, if you invite him on his show, do some of the homework yourself too. So if you had a question about the point he made or, or a snippet he made on in real or short, go and do your own homework to see what he's saying to be, is to be true outside of just having him on. Because if you want to be a true journalist, like, I mean, if he's interviewing, he's taking on the part of being a journalist. Then do your journalistic homework. Go find out. Go go look. I mean, you got to do your your research first before you bring people on and start challenging them. Because if you want, if your whole research is to be a, make a counter argument, you got to kind of look and see if from their vision to like why would they why would this person think that way? And no, you don't have to. I mean, you can just do it sheer for just views. But uh, yeah, this one, I don't, yeah, I ain't, I ain't rocking with him on this one at all, David Pat. I'm not rock, rocking with him on this one because this this is to me. This is, just, again, he's been disingenuous and this is pissing me off. The two movement was based on this idea that believe all women. That's your assertion. I don't believe that to be true. Oh, okay. Well, you let your viewers decide then. Let's go to the next question. Trust but verify. <laughs> I'm not going to say that the Me Too movement was based on believe all women. I'm not going to say that. I don't know what the whole history behind it was, but I know it is to, to take into account what women are bringing up and do an investigation and see what they say to be true. That's not to say that you shouldn't believe them. I mean, I'm saying if somebody brings an accusation up to go do some research behind it, but I'm also not saying because they brought the accusation up that you should tear down a man and fire the man just because they made the accusation. Go do the homework. And if you what you find out with the accusation and what she reported actually is something true, then you fire him, get him arrested, or whatever the, the whatever the repercussion is gonna be for his actions of what he did to that woman and multiple women, then you take it out and you deal with him. I'm fine with that. But by face value to say just because she makes that point. 
and you take disciplinary action against the individual without having done any research or not, I mean, have done any investigative work is wrong. And I'm not going to say that's what the movement is about. I'm not, I'm not going to say that at all. I will say, I think what I, what I perceive this to be about is to listen to the accusations, listen to what's being reported and actually go and investigate and look and see to what this person is accusing the other individual of and look to see if it has some weight behind it. I have friends that have had stuff happen to them in the office where somebody threatened them that if they didn't sleep with them, they wouldn't allow them to get a promotion. And HR didn't do anything with that. I've seen some of that stuff firsthand. So I do understand that whole Me Too movement. I do 100% because people get away with stuff and I and nothing happens to the person that did it to them. But I'm not going to sit here and say that I think it's just, you know, trust and believe everything that a woman says and what she says, then go ahead and fire the guy for it, whether it's true or not, and because you haven't done the research on it. Is the view that I've always had. Believe Police all women was the believe Police all women was the commercial widespread if, commercial. Believe all women was the widespread commercial and cultural sentiment from the Me Too movement. One hundred and fifty thousand percent. You know, I don't know about that though. I don't know about that. Royce, you sidetracked us on Believe All Women, right? No, I, you brought no, it didn't. up out of nowhere. The Believe All Women idea is yeah. a is a is a part of the. Yeah. Claim. And then for him to say that he sidetracked, no, he didn't. The man was trying to make a point and you never would let him make his point. And so because he was trying to give you a strong foundation of why he believed what he believed, which means it's not just you're going to lay down <laughs> some concrete. He's trying to give you foundational work of his own personal beliefs. And you won't let him finish his thought out to, so you can then ask him questions as to why he believes that way based upon the evidence that he gave to you. But you kept cutting, the man kept cutting him off. You all saw he kept cutting him off and wouldn't let him finish his thought. ...that women have become mouthy. Okay. Uh, let me ask about a couple of and other I things will say, in, 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 I will say, yeah. in, 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 in that vein, yeah. when women... When women are allowed to say things about men with no boundaries or no constraints whatsoever, and it's culturally accepted across American culture and across political culture, that is, uh, a, a, in my opinion, more than a, a valid reason to be able to say, hey, women are getting out of control. And I do think radical feminists are getting out of control. I should have been more specific. But I get I, the I thought point I being that humorous. you think women. Anyway, that, that's enough of that. But to go to his, I, because I didn't agree with none of the crap he just said. I'm talking women getting out of control. I don't think, I mean, I don't agree with that at all, that women are getting out of control. But to go back to his initial point, I mean, it is a movement going on now. I mean, look at the whole man versus bear thing like I was talking about earlier. Would you rather be stuck in a forest with a man or a bear? Bear. Man is scary. Um, with a bear. Well, I've heard about bears. They don't always attack you, right? Unless you, like, fuck with them. So maybe a bear. <laughs> And look at some of the stuff to me, well, I would rather be in the woods with a bear versus a man. And I get, again, why women would say that, because, shit, I don't want to be in the woods with nobody outside of the bear, because I don't trust anybody. I, 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 people, and it, there are many cases where when things get hard, people change up who they are. I mean, when it comes to hunger, or thirst, or whatever, people will change up when their, their survival instinct come in, and uh, one person is easier to manage and feed versus two. Now, you could look at the, the strengths behind why it would be advantageous to have two people versus having one person. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to survival and how we going to get out, some people will revert to, oh, it, it's got to just be me. So I don't trust. If it was me in the woods, I'm going to rock with the bear. But it's not because I'm scared of a woman. I'm scared of a man. People are just unpredictable. And I'd rather deal with the, the what I do know. Since you want to quote statistics. I mean, there's like one out of what is 100,000, 200,000 cases to where there's been attacked by a bear. So I'd rather go with the data that supports me being scared of the bear, bear dealing with the bear versus dealing with the man. Because I'd rather take my chances with nature than with human society, which is why I'm, I'm all for the AI movement and man with, <laughs> man with machine. But anyway, back to this interview. Yeah, I just want to talk about this because, I mean, this kind of agitated me when I was sitting listening to this. I don't agree with either one of them, but to sit here and cut this, man, I, I mean, that, that's one of the things that really bothered me. So if y'all going, if you know me and what you want to learn one of the things about me is I hate when people are trying to talk and you cut people off and then you won't even listen to why they, why they, because I'm a, I, I love psychology. I love listening to how people, what, what programs their mind, what pro, what they use to program their mind to make them believe what they want to believe. And I'm, if they're willing to give their information out, I want to listen to it. I want to hear it because I think it's interesting. 
Now, I don't have to agree with it. I'm not going to agree. I'm going to challenge it, but I'm going to let you get all of it out so I can make my own formula to, to figure out how I'm going to come to the conclusion of what I think about you versus what I don't think about you. And you can't do that without all the data. I mean, he's talking about data. Well, then let's go on the data then. You can't make an assertion and assumption about this dude until you get all the data. And the only data you can get is coming from him. So if you're cutting him off and you can't get all of the, all of the data to put into a formula, it's like, why would you even invite him on? Like, why would you even invite him on if you're not even going to let this man finish? And that's the stuff I hate when it comes to regular everyday media. It's like they have people on to these shows and stuff, and people start talking, and, and the host cuts them off. And I'm like, why would you invite this person on if you're just going to cut them off anyway? Because I wouldn't deal with that. Like, if, if I'm talking to you this whole time, you just keep cutting me off, I'm going to turn my, take my mic off, and I'm going to hit just close out. I'm going to say what I got to say, but like, you know what, if your whole purpose of your point is, is to let me come to the show so you can try to degrade me and cut me off and then do whatever you want to do and make it seem like I'm X, Y, and Z, then I'm not going to be a part of this. Now, I'm not trying to say that this dude might not be a dick. I mean, I'm a, you're a Republican, black Republican. I don't, again, I don't know what the hell wrong with you. I don't know what kind of weed you're smoking. I don't know what you're breathing in or what you're drinking, what kind of polluted water you're drinking to do that. Because if you want to believe that Republicans going to do something for you, I mean, you're a fool to believe that. And again, I'm not saying that the Democrats going to do anything for you because, I mean, I've seen tried and true to where they'll say they'll try and do something or they'll try to get a bill passed in the House or they will get it passed in the House, but they will never bring it to the Senate floor to actually make it the actual policy itself. And so it's like, so now you just, you just, you know, trying to prop me up just so you can help me vote for you again and say, well, at least we tried doing something when in actuality, when we had control both the House and the Senate, you could have done a whole bunch of stuff and you didn't. So anyway, that's it for this episode. Y'all, what y'all think about this? Y'all rock with David Pakman sometimes. I don't rock with him all the time on some of his stuff. I mean, some of the stuff I do listen to and I agree with. But when it comes to crap like this, it's like, come on now. You being a fool. You being a fool. Because if, you, if you're not paying attention to what people are saying, again, I mean, the, the man versus bear. Look at what people, women are saying about that. Or go to any comment where any woman accuses a man of anything and look at the comment section. And you will wholeheartedly, again, wholeheartedly see that 90% of the time or 99% of the time, they believe her and she could be wrong. Like, she could be dead wrong. And they're going to presume the man to be guilty until proven innocent based upon their people's own personal experiences. So, anyway, yeah, thank y'all tuning in this episode. Let's talk about it in the comment section. Like, what do y'all actually believe? Or, I mean, do y'all think it, you know, what he's saying is to be true? And y'all agree with people cutting folks off when they're trying to make a point? But, uh, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to come back and make some more stuff. Because, again, I wasn't in the mood for it. Because I didn't see traction on any of the stuff that I was posting, let alone any of the streams that I was doing. But I get it. You know, it can't be. It don't have to be about that. Like, if you enjoy making con content, make your content. So, thank y'all for tuning into this episode. And again, you know, if y'all into podcasts, y'all into doing any form of content creation that's involving any form of uh, uh, video or audio, I have a book out, The Ultimate Technical Guide to Creating a Podcast. It's on sale on my website, pgtv.online. You can get it for a low, low price. And then if you buy from my website, you know, I can uh, you can schedule a one on one, a free one on one consultation with me and I can help you through any part of the book that you stuck at or you need to have some questions on. But it is available on other uh, re on other sellers on Amazon. It's on Apple iBooks and it's on the Google um, Google iBooks, Google Bookstore. So uh, thank you for tuning in this week's episode. Check out, I'm getting back into streaming again. I just streamed uh, Wednesday night. But I, my regular streaming schedule is still Mondays and Wednesdays. I'm streaming both on YouTube, I stream on Twitch, and I'm streaming on TikTok. So make sure y'all follow me on all my social media platforms, playing video games, and just talking trash about other stuff. Because I want, you know, everything I want everything to be serious all the time. So you gotta wind down and have some fun. And that's how I have fun playing some games. So thank y'all again for tuning in to this, this episode. Make sure y'all uh, like, subscribe, share the content with some of the other people that you're following. Until next time, love you all. 